share this message that I shared a few months ago to remind us. Uh, it's interesting that um, last week I was talking to Helen and Jenny and uh, we were talking about the promise that God gave us this year. Remember that? Uh, yeah. And it's amazing how the Lord has been really nudging my, uh, my spirit for actually a couple of weeks. And we need to be reminded. What's the promise? Anyone? Refresh. What's your promise? What was the promise this year? Walking with God. Praise God. And three, four weeks the Lord has been uh, putting in my heart. And I was just telling how we shared that. We discussed that. And um, but I was just waiting when the Lord wants to share that. And what a time is now. First Sunday of July. Six months as I said I passed away. God's reminding us again. <coughs> Walking with and some of you have already said that in the message. It's from Genesis, tell your Bibles. We're going to look and, and remind ourselves. This word came in 31st, January 31st of, of 21. In, in fact, it was an old building. And God gave this word and the fellow was saying, remind the church and yourself that this word is for you guys, for, for Intercross Church, for each one of us. And six months have passed. So many things happen here in that church, isn't it? <coughs> from the building changing and all other things. When, from the very day that the word came walking with God, God has called us Intercross Church to walk with Him. So much had happened, isn't it? Even in just six months. Even the building we changed. Now we have to walk with them. Yeah. <laughs> no building. And many things changed. Many things happened. What was last year's promise? Anyone can remember? Remnant. 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 What was the other year before that? Too much. Too much as it <laughs> Yeah, of two. That was the previous year. Oh, she has gone like only after that. Yeah, the previous year. Uh, Something about warriors. Yes, uh, well, that was previous year as well. Battle belongs to the Lord. That was the previous year, 2018, I think. Uh, 1718. The, the year before last year was. I spoke on Naaman and Yassi. They are a year of choosing. Remember? Naaman and Yassi. 2000, I think it was 2018. And how uh, that, that's the year I brought up this um, big <coughs> box. Remember? It was that year. Yeah, yeah that was that year. Yes. It was about um, Naaman, Yassi's servant. And Elisha. And last year was remnant. That was the year of choosing. How every year God is so beautifully lead, you know, gives us a promise. I don't know what you're about. I feel every year what he says, it actually happens, applies in our life in different ways. Year of choosing was, and we see, oh my, a lot of things happened. The previous year was remnant. And in many aspects, that yeah. took place. And this year, walking with God, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and already, I personally have seen many already things already happen in the six months. We've got six months more to go. But we need to remind, remember ourselves what God has spoken to the cross. This year, He's called us as a church, as an individual, as a family, to walk with God. Means, it's going to be a narrow walk. It's going to be a rough walk. 
There's going to be a time we're going to feel that we are in darkness. But walking with God is important. And Genesis 5.21, as we looked from one, one Old Testament character, who was that? Enoch. Enoch. Enoch, yeah. Some would say Enoch, yeah? Enoch, okay. And we've seen how Enoch walked with God. There were ten generations there. He was the seventh generation, it says. And that was given in, if you go to Jude, he says the seventh. Enoch was the seventh. And then Second Peter uh, speaks about Noah being the eighth. Because Noah comes after Enoch. So in ten generations, friends, in a time where it was among the generation of him, among we spoke only about you know many things. Among the seven generations, Enoch walked with God. Now there were people before Enoch, men of God or rather godly men, if you look. So much. Turn about to five, chapter five. This is where we will get. Chapter five is that? Yeah, from 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 uh, chapter verse one you see the book of generations of Adam. It goes from chapter five. Genesis, how you, you see Adam, you see the next generation, you go on, you see another person, Enos, yeah, it goes on set, and then it comes to Enoch, and then after you see, after Enoch is mentioned, you see Noah, right, so the ten generations there, there are ten generations, let's mention you, and you see, as I said, the Lord really, Ten generations mentioned here, but starting from Adam to Noah. But if you notice, as I said, they all had a pattern in this, um, in the writer, believe Moses wrote the, you know, the first five books. If you, if you think Moses, Moses had a pattern, you see what the Holy Spirit has showed Moses. Three things from verse one. What is that? They lived, they begotten, they died. Yeah, they lived showed many years. The begotten showed the children, and the died showed that they was gone. <laughs> but when you come to Enoch, what I want to show you is, as we've seen even in the thirty-first, it was a, a slight, a different pattern, isn't it? <coughs> a sudden break in the pattern. In, even Enoch is given how he was, but what it says there about him? He lived, he begotten, he walked with God, and he was taken by God. All the ten people lived, begotten, died. Lived, begotten, died. <coughs> Including Adam. But Enoch, he lived, he begotten, he walked with God, and he was taken by God. What, what happened? Why there was a break in that usual pattern? This phrase made that break, isn't it? He walked with God and he was taken by God. It's lovely to see that, isn't it, as I said before. How nice to have that in our, in our title, you know? But the big difference is because he walked with God, the next was the next comes automatically. He walked with God and he was taken by God. I believe the walk of God was so important that for the next one to follow. It's a link between that. Walk with God and brought all the which brought all the difference. So walking with God, and I said 31st, uh, this beginning of this year, the year of ambulation. The word am ambulation comes from the word ambulant, some, someone that walks. Where we get the word ambulance. So ambulation is a medical term denoting movement primarily by walking. I mean some of us know, are you ambulant or not ambulant to say, if you are in a wheelchair. This, as I said, it was so strong when it came on 31st night. And I said that it's not for the weak-minded believers, nor for someone who just makes me happy, God kind of Christians, nor for the religious Christians who pursue this comfort. 
control of security of status, even though all that is important, you hear me? All that is important. <coughs> but our heart is not in those things. It is for the ones who want to be in the bosom of Christ. Despite uncomfortability, despite uncertainty, despite insecurity, they only desire Christ and Him crucified. Yeah. There's the separation comes between normal believers and the believers who wants to be that. Now, walking with God. Remember Enoch. He didn't have the word of God at that time. The word of God come, came much later. How did he walk with God? He was not different from all his fathers before him. Great men who are his, his fathers and grandfathers. Adam, all Seth, and all this, this even uh, the other people before him. So many, Jared, lived 160 years. All these people were, I believe, were men of God. He comes in the right line. But what did he have different that he, it says that the Holy, the Holy Spirit says here that he, is, he walked with God. There was no word of God. Maybe it was an oral tradition, yeah? But did he hear the voice of God? Did he hear this is the way? And what is walking with God? And I said three different, different uh, physiological actions that humans normally have, which shares with animals. Sitting, running, and walking. Sitting is an activity with no movement. Running is an activity with fast movement. And walking is an activity with a balanced movement. Now the literary term for walking is, walking is a process of moving at a pace by lifting or settling down each foot in turn. Never both feet off the ground. That's not walking. So, dictators walk with simply means to accompany, to join. And yet the scripture says that he walked with God. In the word walking, as said, comes a thousand times in the Old Testament and more than 100 times in the New Testament, actually. The first human beings have said, walk with God is for the ones who his grandfathers were. His grandfather, who's that? Adam and Eve. They walked with God. They, they, they were so covered with that shaken on glory that they walked with God. Now how God was spirit, remember? God is spirit. How did they walk with God? And you find Adam had the revelation and the wisdom. And because of that walking, that he had a higher degree of understanding to a point that he named every animal. He didn't go to God for that. He named it and so it became. What wisdom that he moved. Where the wisdom came from? He didn't have any man there to, to get wisdom. It was basically from God. So what came God? Adam had that and we know what happened. He's fell, fallen short of that. His fallen nature. He brought him out. Until man and woman fell from that. Now what happened? The fallen nature allowed them to choose or to hide from walking with God. Is all the scripture. Then we find in the gospel, the New Testament, God came walking through the flesh, incarnate. And his name was Jesus. The word has a name, Jesus. And now we're living in a grace period, in a period that because of the cross, because of the finished work of Christ, yes. we are living in that period now, such a blessed moment, such a glorious moment that the prophets were peeping to, peeping through the time and seeing what we are living now, but it was not for that time. How privileged we are. We are living in a grace age where we, God is walking with us. How? <clears throat> Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. God understand that. Through the Holy Spirit. Did Enoch have the same thing? Or is Jesus walking with him? 
The question is not whether God is walk, willing to walk with his friends, but whether we are willing to walk with him. Mm -hmm. I want to show you three different kinds of walking, and some of you will know. I took up the notes because the Lord has been prompting for four, three, four weeks, but I've said, Lord, when do you want me to share it? Because the remind says, remind the church, remind yourself that this word that I've given is not finished. <coughs> You see the scripture walking before God in Genesis 17. Abraham, they walked before God. He says, walk before me. Now remember, that's because after the fall. Then you find in Deuteronomy, walking after God. Walking before God, walking after God. He told the, the Israel people, the chosen people, the God's people at that time, <laughs> said, you walk after me. Not after anything else, not after other gods, but walk after me. So you got this word walking after God in, in Deuteronomy 13, 4. And then you come, then you see the next walking, the three kinds of walking. Walking before God, walking after God. And the third one is walking with God. In fact, the book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament before it comes to Matthew, the last book of Malachi 2, 6, the only place where you find the word walking with God, and it was for the priest and the Levites. They stood in a close proximity with God, in relationship with God. They are the only ones who are permitted to enter into the holy place and talk with God directly. And therefore we are walking with God. Now, it looks like Enoch, isn't it, had that relationship much before the priests and Levites came. And the word Enoch simply means to instruct, to initiate, to dictate, to dictate, to dictate, to instruct. Now when I look at that word myself, there's something happens in my spirit. Here Enoch, walking with God. Is God instructing him? Detecting him, his very word says that initiating everything that he did. <coughs> did he live up with the name? And so what's this walk here, friends? And remind yourself, God is six months old, we are entering a new month. God is still walking, wants to walk with you and me. <coughs> I'll be very to with you. Now the three aspects of here I want to speak on walk, which I've said everything in my kid. Can I ask you a question and my service? How many of you go back and listen to the YouTube messages? Don't answer me. Please do. I encourage you all to go back and listen and listen and listen. Because sometimes, as we know, 20 minutes only we can concentrate. There's a break after that. We come back 20 minutes. We all know that. Be honest, I, you know. Even I said that same thing. Go back and listen to God's word. Feed yourself with God's word. Feed yourself. Look at the scripture. See things. Come back to me and say, no, that's not right. We look at it. We want to, we want us to grow. Walking means growing. Yeah. This church has to grow, friends. And that's when you, you know the difference of what is not of God or what is of God. Amen? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Go back, I encourage all of you, go back and listen. And that's why I put that there every time. Listen, listen. In fact, you can go to YouTube and find it, but I still put it there on the WhatsApp so that it'll encourage you to go back, listen to find. I go back and listen to my messages you so much a time, and I, I thought to myself, my goodness, it still blesses me, even though I was speaking. But it really didn't. But the mood comes so strong as well, you know. And I fall short too in that moment, you know. But what does it walk with God? Three aspects. The Lord showed me the beginning of this year. First is to be at the same pace with, with, with the person you're walking with. Right? What is that called? I, I gave a word for it. Consistent. consistent. Means walking the same pace. Consistent. Consistent walk. We can't say that you're walking with someone if you're not walking the same, same space. You might be walking, but we are ahead of a person. We may be walking, but we are behind the person. Walking consistent. Did he not walk consistent with God? Did he went before God? Did he went behind God? See, we can do also. We can go before God as well. 
We can. But God wants to walk with him. Consistent walk. Second is, what's the second one is? Same direction with, with God. Constant walk. Walking together involves moving the same direction. If God is turning this way, you go this way with him. Lord, I think this way is better. Hmm? Then you say, okay, you go. We need to walk in the same direction as a church, as a family, as husband, wife, what God wants to do. It's so important, friends. Same direction, which is a constant walk. And many times, natural mind tells you this is the direction. The Lord says, um, just be with me. <laughs> and just come with me. Same direction, constant walk. The third one, I said is, complete walk. Consistent walk. Constant walk and complete walk. What is complete walk? Having a complete fellowship. We talk about intimacy. We talk about hearing his voice. We talk about drawing closer to him. And God will allow every situation on earth to, uh, to help you to come close to him. Does that make any sense this morning? He'll help you to come closer by giving you the most honest time you ever had. So that you can come and depend on him. That is favor. Amen. <laughs> exactly. Favor. So all happens on earth. First thing you ask yourself, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to tell me? This deaf ear can't hear. I'm only looking at myself. For me, for me, for me. I'm looking at all things. But what are you trying to tell me? Are you wanting me to come closer, depend on you? Are you want me to hear what you're saying? Constant, a complete walk, a common fellowship with other. Amos says, how can two walk together if they're not in agreement? Amos 3.3. 3. A common conversation and agreement. So where thoughts are transpired, God thoughts, your thoughts transpire. See, uh, Beginning, there's always, you know, things that you want to do for God and zealous. And then as you go, as you grow, as you grow, you think, I want also to do God's will. But as you really keep moving, you only want God's will. What's happening there? Your thoughts, your one man's even your common sense decisions will become God's. To reach that point. A complete walk. Complete walk. Agreement. You're just not walking with God, but you're, you're also hearing at the same time and listening, listening and talking when you have to talk. And even when you talk to God, it's, it's going to be something that He agrees. You see? Did He not have that? Did He not have the consistent walk? Did He not have the constant walk? Did He not have the complete walk? Imagine Enoch. He never moved too fast, too, not too slow. Not much are mentioned by this man, except in few, very few sparing places you find. Even the New Testament mentioned about him, but very few. Many call him a prophet, because he prophesied. He called four times ungodly in Jude. If you go to any place, a little bit more is mentioned about him is in Jude. But did he have that, friends? And God is asking us, do we have that? He has given us this year to be a walking. And it's not going to finish this year. That's why I went back to last year's promise. I went back to previous year's promise. God is not, it's going to continue, but he's adding his word more and more to you. But start walking with him. Walking with him. Make sure your, your pace is in this the same pace, consistent. Make sure your direction is what he is, he is going with. Make sure your, your fellowship, your thoughts is actually agreement with you. And that's going to be a process. But he not walked that. So I just feel that the seven, this, this month, the new months, we are moving to the seventh month. Remind yourself, remind the church, remind myself, God has called us and invited us to walk with him. A closer walk. 
and he's given us all that we need for that. His spirit, his hammer, everything. Except we need to be willing to be that. Except our willingness that we need to say, yes, Lord. I want to walk with you, consistent walk with you, constant walk with you, complete walk with you. And yeah, Enoch did that. He passed from mortal state to an immortal state. <coughs> I believe he did not even know when, he, when it happened. He was not looking to be passed. He was, he was so engaged and busy just hearing him and walking with him. In a time where the entire his forefathers lost that connection. They're godly men, don't get me wrong. But they lost that connection. Did he hear Adam saying, you know, we, I used to walk with God before. You know, your grandmother and used to walk with God before. It was a glorious time. We didn't have to do anything, just walking with him. The things were tough, but we just heard him. We didn't, we didn't have stress, we didn't have issues. We just heard, we heard him. And he said, stop, we stopped. And he said, wait, we wait. He said, move, we moved. You know, but you know, he lost it. Did he not hear that? And he had a desire not to walk with God? He only was worried about walking. He only was busy, not worried, but he was only had concern to walk with God. Amen. And I'll just say, you can even go, I said that about 1 Corinthians, how about the two kill of an high, our mortal body will put on immorality and all that we know, you know, but then we got to be careful that we have to walk with God, you see? Walk with God. That's why I don't go into the big disagreements and debates on rapture and pre-rapture, post-rapture, middle rapture, when are we going to be raptured? These are mysteries, you have, you have interpretation for everything. Everyone gives a different, from the same scripture. You have mysteries. What we need to know is what God has said, <coughs> clearly. The sound word of God. We can always talk about, it's good to share ideas and sharpen us, but let not that become something that divides and something becomes holes because mysteries are the mysteries. There are mysteries in this Bible, you know that? A lot of mysteries are there. Yeah. Yeah. There are also sound teaching over here. Mm -hmm. And there's also sound teaching. Uh, which we call a doctrine. Doctrine, sound doctrine, and mysteries. Mysteries will always be there. When Christ is coming? Some say before, tribulation, after tribulation, middle tribulation. But is he coming? No. But is he coming? Yes, yes. That's sound. So, you know, even with all other tongues we have, we've got to be careful because we have to in, anchor ourselves in the sound teachings. Mm -hmm. Don't go after mysteries. Mm -hmm. Not I'm discouraging you, but mysteries is a bit hard because you, you can get too carried away of mysteries. Mm -hmm. And man wants that because we all want a sense of wonder. We want it to go, mysteries don't get carried Stay on the sound teachings of, of the word of God. Stay and ground yourself in that. And that's God to show more of his word. Mm -hmm. Mysteries will come. There's so many mysteries I can tell you. Not just raptures. There's so many things we don't know. But do we have to know that? No, friends. No. Well, we might know one day. But all we need now is what's important for this life. How to navigate this life. The enemy is real and active. How do we navigate? How do we hold on to what He's given us? What authority we have in Christ? What He has done by His cross? How that we can actually move? How we can surrender ourselves to Him? How we can move? How we can, you know, we can go through all things because we are more than conquerors. It means also all the sufferings and persecutions, even illnesses that we don't have answers for it. But we know we are more conquerors, more than conquerors than him, in Him. Amen? So beautiful it is. So that's the word of God teaches you. He says that you are the apple of an eye. Is that change? No. He's holding your palm of your hand. Is that change? No. He's there. He never leaves you or forsake you. Is that change? No. Those are sound teachings. Why? Why sufferings in this world? Why sufferings for God's people? I don't know. But we know one thing. True sufferings God can still bring us close to Him. 
We may not answer all the questions why people suffer, why people are abused, why children are daily, thousands everywhere in different ways they have been killed. Not that we support that, we don't support that because we know. But what do we do? We don't. We know that Christ is the answer for everything. And we walk with Him more and more. I try not to go to all these big things because even because it's important that we don't shift the focus of who Christ is. We need to walk with God. We need our consistent walk, a constant walk, and a complete walk. You know, had a testimony, it says, we tell you our testimonies. Testimony that he pleased God. Who gave the testimony? God, the written word. God had his testimony that he pleased God, the Bible says, in Hebrews. Who testified? Who testified Jesus Christ when he came out of the baptism? The water of baptism, even though he didn't require to do that? Who, who testified him that this is my beloved son whom I will please? It's God. So that's why even people don't testify, even people don't say that's okay, but long as you're pleasing God, long as you are in God. God himself for Jesus says, this is my beloved son, isn't it? The father spoke that voice clearly. Is he not pleased God? Yes. If God justified for that. And in Jude 1 14, you know, prophesied as people say it's a second coming prophet, it talks about the judgment of God and all the second coming of Christ. He went through, right through, from Genesis to Revelation. Before even there was a word of God there. And he's seen the second coming of Christ. <coughs> How powerful that was, all because the walk that he had with God, my friends. What do we need to do? We need to be in the same pace with God as he not did. We can't walk ahead of him, we can't walk behind him. He's called us to walk with him. God does not need us to go before him and do things for him. While he wants us to go with him, at the same time, he's gone ahead of us and done things for us. I don't know how many you, uh, how many of you can understand that, what I'm saying. He does not need us to go before him and do things for him. While he wants us to walk with him, at the same time he's gone ahead of us and done things for us. Because he knows the future, he knows the future. Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, all-present, all-knowing, all-powerful. Meaning he can be in all places. Time is not a factor for him, it was for us. It is for us. He is beyond, he is over time. He made time. Space is for us. He is above space. He, he controls space. Space, I mean. Time, space, matter is all nothing to because he made all that. Same place with God. Walking. With him, not before him, not half him. Second, same direction with God. Think of Enoch, he walked with God in the darkest time in human history. When man refused to associate with God. When man lost that first, first quality of walking with him. Most of the time his direction is different to us. But Enoch chose to walk with God. <coughs> what should we do then? Walk in the same direction with God. That's why he was able to please God. Seeing the things that God is going to do 100,000 years from now in this time. And also stroll down the curtains of, of time into mortality. Not knowing that he has put on one. See, the way he walked and walked, walked, he didn't even know. He walked off into eternity with God. That's powerful. And I said, what direction is God taking us? I said the first night, it's not there. <laughs> what, what direction God is taking your family? What direction is taking your, you personally, individually? What direction is taking your church of Intercross? Do you know? Are you going in the same, same way? 
We need to have a common fellowship among Amos 3, 3. How can we walk together unless they agree? Again, Enoch and the aperture, the Amplified version tells that he had an aperture fellowship with God. Aperture. <coughs> More than a habit, isn't it? <coughs> Meaning, he didn't have a time to pray, a time to read. Now, don't get me wrong, all oh, this is beautiful. All oh, this is beautiful as it is. He didn't have a time to pray, time to read the Bible, time to listen to a message. His life became, could not separate, separate him from being with God. And that's where we get all these terms. You can, you, can, you can be in the car and worship God. You can be in the car and God can speak to you. You can, you can do in the kitchen, you can be at work. Doing some things and God can speak to you. That's walking with God. Now it doesn't mean that you're on weakness, you won't fall, you have temptations, but you're getting up and saying, Lord, that relationship. Aperture fellowship. You know, had an aperture fellowship with God that he continually hearing God and listened to God and was talking with God. Amen? Continuous fellowship. It's a continuing fellowship. It's to become a second nature to us, as children of God, as where the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, should become a second nature, talking to God. We should be able to feel what God feels from us. Out. We we need we need to be able to understand what is He from His sight and His perspective. Notice, Enoch never said wicked four times. He used the word in Jude fourteen. The ungodly, the ungodly, the ungodly, the ungodly, four times. I wonder why he didn't use the word wicked, but he used ungodly. What is ungodly? Someone which is not godly in God's sight. You know, got to be careful of certain things that we can pick up on the way. And I, I, I always, the Lord tries to remind me, I fall, but look, it's all about Him. And as we walk with Him, and I'm walking with him as well, I'm trying to walk with him as well, to be honest with you. I haven't waited like that yet. God is speaking to me as well. We are called to be godly people. In what? Doing a set of don'ts and do's? No. Hear what you say. The word of God is a framework. The word of God is everything. But we have to hear in the voice of God. I'm talking about. The word of God and the voice of God should go together. Amen. Constant worship with God. Enoch started to walk with God at the age of 65. If you read your Bibles, you find that Enoch walked with God, the word says, at the age of 65. And he walked with God for 300 years. Because those, those days men lived long. Human beings lived long. So his total life was 365 years. Enoch lived. Right? Now, when you do your maths and do your calculations, which I'm not that good in it, but I try to do it, when you, when you do a total lifespan of Enoch of 365 years, which means 75% of his life he walked with God, if you calculate it, okay? Knowing his full lifespan, knowing when he started walking with God at the age of 65, Ooh, that gives me a lot of hope. 65, he started walking with God. 300 years, 365 years taken. So 75 years he walked with God. If Enoch could walk 300 years with God, cannot we walk in this, walk with God at least a quarter of that period? And it's, it's interesting. Today I was looking at dwelling, yesterday I was still meditating on that poem. The Lord said, Years a man only walked. 75% of his life. And he was such a great man. Before Jesus Christ. Before the New Testament. 75% yeah. of his life. That I never had this in my notes. Just don't want me. 75% of his life he walked with God. Okay? We can walk with God 100% now because of Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Yeah. Holy Spirit never used to dwell in the Old Testament. Not that Holy Spirit didn't want to. But people are not ready to. And the, the covenant has not yet come. The new covenant. 
So 75% only know, you know, walk. You want to see great brother madness? But 75% he walked. The 75% of walking, great things we see about him. We are given 100% now. Mm -hmm. That just hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow, I didn't have this. 70% of a man can walk means we have all 100% now to walk. We have the word of God, we have the spirit of God, we have everything. Not 75%. 100% is given to us. A full charge is given to us. We can have a consistent walk with Him. We can have a constant walk with Him. We can have a complete walk with Him. I'm talking individually. I'm talking about us as a family, as a church. How important that we need to walk with God. Even when we come here in the gathering, we need to walk with God, friends. We need to understand what's the move of the Lord, sensitive of the Lord. And I, and I said to some of you, because just a couple of months ago, is maybe because of the promise that he's given me, yes, a couple of months ago, he's talking, telling me that we need to move in the direction that God wants us to move. Yeah. How are we going to know, know it? We've got to sense that the Holy Spirit working yeah. in the congregation yeah. and move in the direction where he wants us to do. How that we can miss it? And then I said, why is for a couple of months or weeks that you, you start bringing this burden to me? <clears throat> when I was looking at this again a few weeks ago, I says, nothing now you understand why. Because we are called, how called this church to walk with God. Yeah. And this walk the church will start again from your private life, from your personal life, mm -hmm. from your family life. Mm -hmm. Remember that. It's a narrow walk. Let me say that now, which is not in my notes. I just saying right now, it's a lot easier. Narrow walk. Not very comfortable walk. Narrow way. Rough way. But you're walking with him. You're walking in his space. You're walking in his direction. You're yelling from him while you're walking. How beautiful is that? Rough walk, could be a dark walk sometimes, could be a narrow walk, elbow, like one man, you know, like one man is saying, you know, when Jesus said about the narrow way and this, you know, he was not even talking about walking like, he's like walking like this, he said. That's how the narrow is. But the great news is, friends, we are walking with him in that narrow way. We are walking in the direction of him in that narrow way. And we are walking, while we are walking with him, he's teaching us. He, we, we, hear, we hear his voice hard. He's hearing. And he's changing our thoughts. He's changing our, our concept of him. How many of us sometimes I have it? Concept of what I thought God is. Because I want to break that. Concept of God. God's not a concept. There's no concept, it's what he is, is revealed in this world. And humans created by God, and we as believers can walk, call for a walking relationship. You know I mean? We are called to have a walking relationship. Because a walking relationship reveals a working relationship. Not the other way around. That's works. In everything you see that, people want to work for God. But are they walking with God? Yes. And that can come out of a genuineness. Not in all wrong way I'm talking about. People can walk for God with a genuineness, with a good intention, with a great intention. Yes. But you're missing something more important is walking with them first. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, when he called the disciples, you know what first thing he said? That totally blew me. He, the scripture said that he, he called the disciples to be with him first. And while they were with him, he started to teach them. He called the twelve of them to be with him. And they were completely separated for three and a half years to be with him. And through that relationship, he taught them everything. While they were slept with him, they hated him, they went with him, they seen all things of him, and that they were, they were loved. So we are called for a walking relationship. 
And from a walking relationship comes a working relationship for him. You and me will not succeed if we if we working for him and not walking with him. On the other hand, even if you walk with him and don't feel we are working for him, it's okay. Hello, I hear the other part. On the other hand, if you if you're walking with him and don't feel that he's working, work, you're working for him, it's okay. It's all right. Some of men they didn't even do anything, but just walk with him. What's the point of working all for him and not walking with him? And I always tell young believers, you walk with him first. You walk with him first. Don't forget, I want to serve ministry. I want to be at this. I want to be that. Start walking with him. Walk with him. And end of the day, Lord, I'm walking with him. And that's what we feel. I'm, Lord, I don't see I'm doing anything for you. He says, well, you are doing actually by walking, walking with me. Your very life becomes a testimony. Your very talk starts changing. You may not see it. We like to see things, don't we? In the natural. But walking relationship is the priority, friends. And I believe this church, God wants us to walk with him. Hallelujah. Let's cultivate six months of past. Let's cultivate to walk with him. Lord, show me how I need to walk with you. Lord, I don't want to go ahead of you, before you. I don't want to go another direction for you, but I want it to be the same direction. If I don't see anything, I don't see any perks around me, any benefits around me, Lord, I want to walk with you. I want to grow, Lord. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to grow with you. I want to grow what you're saying. I've been there for so many years. Lord, take me to heights that you take me. Show me. Enough is enough what I, I know. I want to know what you, you have both for me. And you can never exhaust God, okay? Uh -huh. So don't be, uh, think, ah, oh, what if I exhaust God? You can't. Mm -hmm. So but start asking God, Lord, show me things. Show me everything. Show me, show me everything. Show my life. Show, show what I am. What I need to do, what I have to do, show me. Let my book be. Let I give you permission in every part of my life. But I want to know you. I want to walk with you. Walk in relationship, friends. And you, you'll be surprised when you walk, walk with him. He'll take you and use him when he wants and all he wants. That's nothing. He's done it thousands of years, serving God. But just be mindful that you're walking with him. And you hear from him. I said in my notes, this year 2022, I'm ready for you. God is going to impart the walking relationship back to his remnant. God, the Holy Spirit is going to walk with his remnant. God is going to look for Enoch's this year who can be instructed, followed initiatives, and dedicated to God, come what may. So I just want to remind and encourage you. Start walking with him more stronger. Don't worry about the world. The world will always be the world. Walk with him. Walk with him. Develop a relationship with him. And close your eyes and Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for reminding us again what you give in the church, this treasure. Thank you, Lord. That the first night you spoke to us about it. Lord, yes, we forget that the primary goal of our life is to walk with you, to have a consistent walk with you, to have a constant walk with you, to have a complete walk with you. Father, I just lift my hands right now and I pray for the people over here. And people are watching, even the ones who are going to watch in the YouTube, Father, I just pray. And the ones who are going to watch who even haven't accepted you in the YouTube, Father, I pray that you bring them to you. That they'll come to know that Jesus is the only way. And if they are watching who already accepted you, are born again. Lord, I pray you to my friends over here. <clears throat> we'll have a desire and hunger to walk with you. Lord, the coming months that you make our walk real. 
können. Make our hearts discerning to know which is your walk and which is your not your walk. Help us to go the same direction. Help us to listen to you, the still small voice that becomes stronger and stronger when we listen. Help us to listen to a voice telling us things. Help us to have a listening heart in everything that we do. Father, I pray, I stretch my hands and pray for the congregation and myself this morning that you will that we remind ourselves that we need to walk with you and give us the strength. We can't do it by ourselves, not in our righteousness, but all that which you have done on the cross. Father, we pray that we would desire to walk with you in the coming months and not just this year, all of our life. We continue to walk with you and hear from you and talk with you. Thank you, Master. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you. God bless you, friends. Thank you.